The Philippines, rapidly emerging as one of the world's fastest growing economies, has seen a boom in infrastructure, digitalization, and retail. This surge has opened up significant opportunities for international businesses and investors. As demand across various sectors soars, the country is experiencing a construction frenzy that's dramatically reshaping the cityscapes. Manila, a massive metropolis known for its impressive number of skyscrapers, ranking 11th globally, just behind Bangkok and Jakarta, still lacks a defining structure that could redefine its skyline, a super tall building. While skyscrapers have become a common feature in cities around the world, the Philippines is no exception. Major urban areas like Makati, Ortigas, Alabang, Cebu, and Davao are already dotted with high-rises, and the progress isn't stopping there. Construction is now reaching into the provinces, spreading development beyond the major cities. Metro Manila's skyline has expanded both horizontally and vertically over the years, thanks to vigorous private sector investment driving real estate development throughout the region. The skyline of the Philippines is undergoing a transformation fueled by strong macroeconomic fundamentals that have sparked a construction boom. Yet, for many skyscraper enthusiasts in the country, there's still something missing. A towering landmark that would place the Philippines among the world's most iconic skylines. So, why hasn't the Philippines built a super tall structure yet? The story of high-rise development in the country began back in 1912 when the eight-story Manila Hotel became the nation's first modern high-rise. This building dramatically changed Manila's appearance and marked the start of the city's rapid urbanization. However, it wasn't until 1996 that the Philippines saw its first true skyscraper, a building soaring above 150 meters. That year, the 44-story Pacific Plaza condominium rose along Ayala Avenue in Metro Manila, heralding a new era of architecture. Although impressive at the time, it has since been overshadowed by newer and taller buildings. The next major wave of private high-rise development kicked off in the 1970s, with the Ortigas area in Quezon City, Mandaluyong, and Pasay becoming hotspots for growth. Significant investments from key players like the Gokongwe Company have transformed these areas with shopping malls, BPO facilities, and manufacturing businesses now dotting the landscape. Makati City, the financial heart of Metro Manila, stands out with some of the nation's tallest buildings. The Philippine Bank of Communications Tower, or PBSOM Tower, held the title of the tallest structure in the Philippines for 18 years, reaching a height of 259 meters. Makati's skyline, once dominated by low-rise buildings from the 1960s and 1970s, has undergone a dramatic vertical shift. When height restrictions were relaxed in the 1990s, developers took full advantage, constructing taller buildings that tripled the usable space on existing land. The city's recent growth has rapidly reshaped its landscape, pushing its skyline to new heights. Today, most of the new buildings rising in the Philippines stand around 45 stories tall, with the tallest reaching up to 52 stories. However, the real buzz is in Teguig, where a significant urban transformation is underway in Bonifacio Global City. This area, once known as Fort Bonifacio or Fort McKinley, was privatized in 1992 and has since become the epicenter for cutting-edge development. Despite the surge of towers being built across the Philippines' major cities, none had broken the 300-meter mark until September 2008. That's when Taglig City announced that a 66-story skyscraper would be constructed, destined to surpass the PBCOM Tower, which had long held the title of the nation's tallest building. With a final height of 318 meters, the Grand Hyatt Manila officially opened on January 23, 2018, claiming the crown as the tallest structure in the country. As of June 2022, Makati leads the way with 75 skyscrapers standing at least 150 meters tall, followed by Taguig with 40 and Mandaluyong with 32. The Grand Hyatt Manila in Taguig tops the list at 318 meters, 
followed by Makati's PB Som Tower at 258.6 meters and Trump Tower Manila at 250.7 meters. Though there have been ambitious proposals for other skyscrapers to reach above 300 meters, none have yet come to fruition since the completion of the Grand Hyatt Manila. The cityscape continues to grow, but the quest for the next record-breaking tower remains an open challenge. The race to build a super tall structure in the Philippines kicked off in 1996 with an ambitious proposal for the Centennial Tower, also known as Luneta Tower. This mixed-use observation tower was initially set to rise in Rizal Park, Manila, as it ran memorial for the 100th anniversary of Philippine independence. However, due to public backlash over the original site, the plan was later shifted to Pasig City. The Centennial Tower was envisioned to soar 390 meters into the sky, equivalent to a 100-story building, making it nearly twice the height of the Rufino Tower, which was Metro Manila's tallest structure at that time. The project was slated to be constructed and financed by the German firm Walter Bau AG, with an estimated cost of $200 million, or roughly 5.2 billion pesos. Walter Bau AG confidently announced in July 1996 that the tower could be completed by 1998. However, the plan hit a major roadblock when the administration of President Fidel V. Ramos hesitated to greenlight the project. The proposed location in Rizal Park drew significant criticism, leading the National Centennial Commission to relocate the project to a lot owned by the Metro Manila Development Authority at the corner of Julia Vargas and Moralco Avenues in Pasig. Despite these efforts, the towering vision of the Centennial Tower ultimately never came to fruition. Unfortunately, the construction of the Centennial Tower never took off, marking the first major disappointment for Filipino skyscraper enthusiasts. But hope was rekindled in the early 2000s with the proposal of another ambitious project, Sky City. This 80-story skyscraper was planned for Mandaluyong City, a joint venture between real estate developer Iguanzan Incorporated and Sambuena Realty Corporation. With an estimated height of 335 meters, Sky City was set to become the tallest building in the country. The skyscraper was envisioned as a mixed-use development, featuring a hotel, office spaces, and residential units. However, the project quickly hit a snag when a lawsuit was filed by a homeowners association from the nearby upscale Green Hills East Village, bringing construction to a halt. Despite this, on September 14, 2005, the Philippine Court of Appeals ruled in favor of the developers, allowing them to resume construction. Yet, by 2008, the only visible progress was a large excavation site, with no further work done. In 2010, the second division of the Philippine Supreme Court rejected the challenges posed by the Green Hills East Association, giving the green light for the project to proceed. The developers announced that Sky City, now re-envisioned as a 77-story building with eight basement levels, would move forward. Despite the legal victory, the long-awaited skyscraper has yet to rise, leaving its future uncertain and the anticipation of Filipino skyscraper enthusiasts still unfulfilled. To this day, a large empty pit remains at the intersection of Ortigas Avenue and EDSA, a stark reminder of the once ambitious Sky City Tower project, which was envisioned as the tallest building in the Philippines. In the late 2000s, another grand proposal emerged, the Pekko Tower, planned to soar to a height of 650 or 655 meters near Manila Bay in Paranaque City. This observation tower was set to become a defining landmark of Pekko City, now known as Entertainment City Manila. This sprawling leisure complex, complete with hotels, shopping malls, convention centers, and casinos, aimed to elevate Manila's status as a global entertainment destination. Had it been built, Pekko Tower would have ranked among the tallest towers in the world. The concept came from the Malaysian conglomerate Genting Bahad, but by 2010, the project's future became uncertain when Cristino Navia took over as Pekko's chairman. 
Nadwiet indicated that the tower, along with several other projects, might be scrapped despite the continued development of Entertainment City. Peko Tower was poised to become the second tallest structure in the world, just behind Dubai's Burj Khalifa. However, the project was abruptly abandoned. One of the main reasons cited was its proximity to Manila International Airport, where strict height restrictions apply. Although the tower never materialized, Entertainment City has since become home to iconic establishments like Okada Manila, continuing to shape the skyline and alio of the area. Another ambitious project was the Philippine Diamond Tower, a proposed broadcast and observation tower set to rise on the former Manila Seedling Bank property in North Triangle, Quezon City. In February 2016, the Japanese government expressed interest in investing in the project through the Corporation for the Overseas Development of Japan's ICT and Postal Services. There were also reports that China was keen on bidding for the project. With an estimated cost of 41.4 billion pesos, the tower was projected to be completed in 2019, with plans to open it to the public in 2018. However, despite the high hopes and international interest, the construction of the Philippine Diamond Tower was unexpectedly shelved, and the project was quietly cancelled for reasons that remain unclear. This left yet another void in the skyline that could have been a defining symbol for the Philippines. Like the proposed Centennial Tower and Paco Tower, the Philippine Diamond Tower never broke ground, despite the advancements in digital terrestrial television and ISDBT. Another ambitious project was the Iton Tower, a planned skyscraper in Bonifacio Global City, Tigrig. Initially, the building was designed to rise 308 meters tall, but its height was later adjusted to 275 meters with 36 floors. The Icon Tower was designed with an elliptical cone shape, which would reduce construction costs while making the structure more resilient to earthquakes and typhoons. Its almost Gothic facade, supported by arches, was meant to create a striking visual presence with office spaces illuminated by natural light and social spaces, terraces, and atriums incorporated throughout the design. The tower was expected to be completed by 2021, but as of now, there's been no word on whether the project will move forward. Outside of Manila, another proposal for a megatoll structure emerged in Puerto Princesa, Palawan. The Princesa Tower, a proposed 680-meter observation tower, was announced in September 2018 by the Puerto Princesa city government. The project aimed to create an international landmark for the city. The tower was planned for the Santa Lucia Environmental Estate, with consideration also given to a site in front of Puerto Princesa's new green city hall. Meanwhile, in Mindanao, a private European funder proposed the SJS Maritime Empire Tower an 88-floor skyscraper planned for Bislig City, Shurigo Gelsa. The tower was expected to be completed within five years. However, much like the other grand projects, there have been no further updates, leaving the future of these super-tall towers uncertain. According to the Council on Tall Buildings and Urban Habitat, the world is entering the era of mega-tall buildings, those towering over 1,900 and 68 feet. Currently, only three such giants exist. The Burj Khalifa in Dubai, standing at 2,717 feet and completed in 2010. The Shanghai Tower in China, reaching 2,073 feet and completed in 2015. And the Mecca Royal Clock Tower in Saudi Arabia, which stands at 1,972 feet and was finished in 2012. By 2020, the number of megatall buildings is expected to more than double. Projects like the Ping and Finance Center in Shenzhen, the Greenland Center in Wuhan, Medeka PNB 118 in Kuala Lumpur, and the Kingdom Tower in Jeddah are all under construction, pushing the boundaries of architectural achievement. In Southeast Asia, Countries like Malaysia and Vietnam are racing ahead with their own super-tall structures, leaving the Philippines trailing behind. So, why does the Philippines lag in the race to build super-tall towers? 
the answer lies in the country's unique geographical challenges. The Philippines is hit by an average of 20 typhoons each year, with about five being particularly destructive. Building a super-tall structure in this typhoon-prone region is a significant risk. Additionally, the country sits on the Pacific Ring of Fire, making it vulnerable to powerful earthquakes. Metro Manila, the capital, is located near a fault line, which adds another layer of complexity to constructing such enormous towers. These factors make the prospect of building super-tall structures in the Philippines a daunting challenge. Manila International Airport is smack dab in the middle of the bustling business districts of the capital, which makes sticking to the required building height a real challenge. Metro Manila, the heart of the country's political and economic activity, struggles with chaotic urban planning. The city is notorious for its traffic jams, making it a tough place to start and run a business. Foreign investment is also a tough nut to crack. In 2020, the Philippines was ranked third most restrictive out of 84 countries in the OECD's Foreign Direct Investment Regulatory Restrictiveness Index. Adding to the woes, the country has some of the highest electricity rates in Asia. Businesses are increasingly worried about rising electricity costs and power shortages, especially during the scorching summer months. Studies reveal that electricity costs in the Philippines are shockingly high with residential, commercial, and industrial rates soaring between 25% and 87% above those of its Southeast Asian neighbors. Corruption is another major issue. Over 60% of the country's top business leaders believe the government should focus on cracking down on corruption to attract foreign investment. This mirrors a widespread view that the country has long struggled with corruption. The Philippines also faces a significant infrastructure gap. For investors, a critical concern is ensuring that new buildings will attract tenants. An empty super-tall skyscraper won't generate profit, so securing leases is often a make-or-break factor. Construction of these massive buildings involves several challenges, including time, efficiency, and material costs. Though the Philippines hasn't built a super-tall skyscraper yet, its economy is zooming ahead with one of the fastest growth rates in the world. This is clear from the bustling industries popping up all over the country. A super tall building in the Philippines is definitely within reach, especially with booming business hubs in Cebu, Davao, and Pampanga. Plus, with the new Manila International Airport nearing completion just 35 kilometers north of the capital, we might soon see an iconic skyscraper rise in Manila without those pesky height restrictions. If you found this interesting, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share your thoughts with us.